Hiya. Hope you're well. Um, when I was, although I'm a very happy adult now, when I was uh, a youngster, and I'm 46 years old now, I was tended to be given these labels, although ADHD didn't exist then, but essentially it was to do with can't concentrate on anything. Um, so you'd say I had ADHD, autism spectrum, and being hypersensitive. And now I'm 46, what I want to do, looking back at my childhood and noticing there's more and more children seem to be having the same life I had, I just want to share how I've become aware of how I think. And when I'm explaining it to people, this is the way that seems to work, for me anyway. As I say, imagine you're sitting in the middle of a circle, that's you, and all these people around the outside are people, and all those people are going to talk to you all at the same time. Okay? And you're not allowed to ask them to be quiet, you've just got to let them do it. You have no control over what they say and how long they talk or how loud they are. Okay, so imagine yourself what it would feel like in the circle to have all those people talking to you at the same time. That is what it's like to be, to have this sort of hypersensitive brain um, that I've got. So I feel everything around me. So every tree, every person, every car, every building is effectively for me like someone talking to you. Okay? So it's masses and masses amounts of input. Yep, so imagine yourself in the middle, 30 people talking to you at the same time. Could you concentrate? Yeah. It'd be pretty hard, I think. And that's effectively, for me, a, a child that is, can't concentrate, is quite flighty, um, does what we would consider you know, random things. Um, it's effectively, that's the world that they're in. Everywhere they're in, they have loads, 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 loads and loads of input. Now, it does vary from child to child. For example, I've got one here where they're more sensitive, so they have even more people talking to them. Yep. And also, another one here, where they have less people talking to them. And also what seems to vary is the, the child's or person's ability to process information, it, that varies. Yeah, so if you're a high processor and you have low sensitivity, you can probably manage it. If you have loads and loads and loads of input, but the ability to process is low, then you're going to be even more flighty, even harder to concentrate. Okay, it's the equivalent of you being in the middle of the room with lots of people talking to you. The volume you can cope with varies from person to person. Hopefully this not feels like it. So if you do have a child that's got those, the best way to imagine, put yourself in their world, is to stick yourself in the middle of 30 people around the outside and let them all talk to you. That'll be what it'll feel like. Now, how I learned to cope with it, when I was a kid anyway, as different as I got older, was what I learned to do was, here, I'd tree hug one thought, or one person, absolutely obsess over it. And the more I obsessed over it, the more I could drown out all the other voices. Yep. The other way I coped with it was by turning it into noise, by making it background noise, so I could just float away in it. It's a bit like, say, you're sitting in a coffee bar, you do all the background noise, you just turn everything to background noise and you just float away. Yep. So I obsess or I float away. And that was how I coped with it as a kid. Um, as an adult though, obviously I've got to get on in the real world. Um, and what I found was, uh, what started to work for me is when, for example, most of my teachers and my parents and things would always want me to effectively almost like ground myself on them. They'd say, teacher would say, come to me, pay attention to me, and do what I tell you to do, and then I'll be happy. But the problem was, I've got so many voices around the outside, yeah, that it's actually very difficult for me to ground myself on, on the teacher, because the teacher wasn't always there. Yeah? Okay, so what I found was a better way of doing it, it was effectively, as I'm saying here, instead of grounding myself around the world around me, to actually ground myself on myself, on myself. And by that I mean manage my own thoughts, become aware of my own thoughts, manage them for myself, make choices in how I want to think, how I want to feel. And that gave me the grounding to start making choices around who I might need to concentrate on, yeah, and when I would need to float into the noise. Okay? 
So that's essentially what I've, I've sort of, and then also I found much easier to hold, make friends, um, having loving relationships, um, because once I grounded myself, people who liked me for who I am came to me. I didn't have to go out to them, they came to me because they liked me for who I was. And that was much better as well, it was much more secure. And that's how I found my happiness, if you like, having had a difficult childhood with those labels. Okay? So essentially, I guess my sharing as an adult to parents of children on these types of things is to help the child learn to ground themselves against themselves. The word I tend to use now is emotional self-reliant. To be, to be able to become self-reliant in managing their own thoughts and their own emotions. And, and that is a way I would share with you what worked for me, for me to be happy when I had those labels as a kid. Okay, I hope that adds. Um, have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.